Hello everyone, 8-Bit Flashback here, and the homebrew scene for the Nintendo Switch just made a huge jump. Laka is now available for the Switch, and what this is, is a minimal operating system that uses RetroArch as a front end. So now we have a bunch of new emulators available such as the PlayStation, Sega Saturn, Nintendo 64, and much, much more. So let's check this out. So Locker for the Switch right now is in the very early stages, so there's definitely some issues. The biggest problem would be that there is no sound, which is a huge deal. Another big issue is it's causing battery calibration issues, so getting a true 100% charge is going to be a problem. So both of those problems are a pretty big deal, but they are currently working on a fix and hopefully this will get solved in a future update. So I am going to show you today how I installed this, but I would highly recommend waiting until we have more of a stable release. There's just too many issues, especially that battery calibration error. It's just not worth it right now in my opinion. But this is what I do. I like to mod things, so I'm willing to accept the consequences. Also, I'd like to mention when you're doing stuff like this with your console, there's always a chance you can brick your console or lose online features like online gameplay or access to Nintendo eShop. So I'm just giving you a heads up and you can proceed at your own risk. So what exactly is Laka? Laka is a Linux distribution aimed at turning small computer devices into retro gaming consoles. It's a minimal operating system using RetroArch as a front end. It contains nothing more or nothing less than what's required for RetroArch and its 100 plus supported consoles in standalone games. So the only thing this does is it runs RetroArch. So I'll make sure to post a link to this guide down below in the description. And here's a look at a couple of those issues I was talking about earlier. So let's start with step zero, what you need. A first generation switch, a spare SD card of at least two gigabytes formatted in FAT32, and a way to put your switch into RCM. A host PC to set up the SD card and a way to run the exploit. You can use a PC, a Mac, or an Android device. And a USB-C cable to plug in the switch and run the exploit. Now we're on step one, preparing the SD card. And what you're going to have to do is download this image that's available here. So you download this and it's going to be inside a zip file. You're going to extract the contents of that to your desktop or wherever. Then you're going to use a program like Etcher or Win32 Disk Imager to write that image to the SD card. Now we're on step two, which is booting Laka, and there's multiple ways we can do that. We can use a PC with Windows, we can use a Mac, or we can use Linux. I'm gonna be using an Android device. So for your phone, you're gonna to have to download an app, and you can download it right here, and then sideload it to your phone, or you can go directly to the website on your phone and download the app there. The first time you open the app, you're gonna get a message, and it's gonna tell you you need to put a couple files in this location. So the two files you're gonna need are gonna be located right here. So right underneath the booting from Linux, you're gonna click on this link right here. So you're going to download that and extract it and inside there is going to be a payloads folder and inside that payloads folder there's going to be two different files called the cbfs.bin and the coreboot.rom. So what you want to do is copy both of those files to the show file 2 directory on your phone. And right there on step 2 it shows you two different examples of where that directory could be located on your phone. So my exploit's ready to go and test out but I want to talk about a couple more things first. If you go to the update tab on this site it does talk about some future updates and it looks like that'll be fairly simple to do. It looks like we won't have to rewrite that image, so that'd be nice. Also, if we go to the FAQ section, it talks about some of the pros and cons and gives you a list of working emulators, so that'd be worth checking out. Okay, so I got my app all ready to go on my phone called the Swix Linux Launcher. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And now it's saying connect to the switch. So remember the first time you load this app, it's gonna ask you to place a couple files in a certain directory, and that's what I talked about earlier. And for this to work, your switch will have to be in recovery mode. And if you want to learn how to do that, I'll post a link to one of my previous videos that talks about how to hack your Joy-Con using the tin foil trick. But if you want to get technical, it's actually made of aluminum foil, but a lot of people still commonly refer to it as tin foil. I don't know why, but they do. So the very first time you boot lock on your switch, it's going to resize the SD card and it's going to require a reboot on the console. So you're going to hold the power button for about 12 seconds, turn it off. Then you're going to reboot it into recovery mode then on your phone, you're going to restart the Switch Linux Launcher app, then hook up that USB cable and start that process again. And this time it should boot Laka all the way up to the RetroArch screen. And I can confirm that Laka is working on a couple different firmwares that I know of already, 5.0.2 and 3.0.0. I personally tested both of those firmwares and Laka seems to be working the same on both. So once the RetroArch screen loads up, you should be safe to unplug that USB cable. So now we have RetroArch up and running, and it should be a breeze if you're familiar with RetroArch to navigate through all the folders and settings. 
And if you've never used Recharge before, it is a bit of a learning curve, but it's a pretty simple interface and you'll figure it out pretty quick. So as you can see, I've already got a bunch of emulators up and running for systems like the Neo Geo, the Game Boy, PC Engine, Nintendo 64, Nintendo DS, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Sega Saturn, Sega Genesis, Game Gear, and PlayStation. And there's a lot more emulators I haven't even tried out yet. So to get all these games on your SD card is kind of a pain because part of your SD card is in a Linux file system. So if you go to plug that SD card into your Windows computer, it will not read it. So the easiest thing for me to do is to use a program called FileZilla to transfer files via online to my Switch. So to start off with that, I need to log into Wi-Fi. And the first time you go to use the Wi-Fi, it's going to give you a message saying you're going to have to reboot the console for it to work. So you're going to go to the first tab and then scroll down to RCM Reboot. So what that's going to do is put your Switch in recovery mode. Now you want to go to your phone and open up that Switch Linux launcher app again and then connect the USB cable and then boot lock it once more and then Wi-Fi should be activated. Now you should be able to search for your network and enter your password, and once you're connected, it should say online. Now on the second tab inside the user interface, we want to enable the show advanced settings. Then we're going to head back and then scroll down to services, and inside there we're going to enable the SSH. Now we want to back out of that and go to the first tab and scroll down to information, and then network information, and this is the IP address we're going to use inside FileZilla. So the host is going to be the IP address, the username is root, R-O-O-T, the password is root, the port is 22, then you're going to click on quick connect. Now I'm going to click on storage, then navigate down to ROMs, and this is where you want to put all your games. So you can put your N64 games, your Super Nintendo, say Genesis, say Saturn, so whatever ROMs you're trying to use are going to go in this location right here. And depending on your connection speed and what size of games you're trying to add, it could take a long time. I added a bunch of Sega Saturn and Dreamcast games, and it took most of the night. So it may take a while, and there's some other methods out there, but this is what worked for me. Once you're done adding games, you're going to want to go to RetroArch and go to the Plus tab, and then go to Scan Directory, and we're going to scan that ROM directory. And that'll start putting the games in the right locations. So let's start off by testing a Sega Saturn game. This is Bug 2. This is one of my favorite games. It's actually a 2D game, but it kind of has like a 3D look to it. And it has a really good soundtrack. It's too bad the audio doesn't work because I really like the music and the sound effects in this game. And it is running a little bit slow. It's averaging about 33 to 22 frames per second. So it's not really enjoyable to play yet, especially since I don't have any sound. But it is really nice to see this up and running on my Nintendo Switch. And it's only gonna go uphill from here. So I'm really excited about this. A couple things I'd like to mention about Laka. Uh, you cannot put that screen to sleep. To turn the console off, you can hold that power button for 12 seconds to power it off, or you can push that home button and then navigate to the first tab in RetroArch and then down to Reboot RCM. Then from there, you can hold that power button for 10 to 12 seconds and it'll power off. And this is the way they actually recommend to do it. And here is a PlayStation game. This is Crash Bandicoot. And I'm really impressed how well this is running. The frame per seconds is pretty high. Uh, everything looks great, there's just no audio. So as soon as they get that audio issue fixed, this will end up being a great emulator for PlayStation. And I did test out a few different games for PlayStation. I also tried out Spider-Man, and everything seemed like it was working. I was able to navigate through the menus. Uh, but when I went to actually start the game, I ended up with a black screen. So I'm not really sure what's going on with that. I also tried out Tekken 3, which is one of my favorite games for PlayStation. And of course, I got to play as Bruce Lee, that they call him Law, but we all know who that's supposed to be. And this seems to be running really well too. The frames per second seems to be pretty good. It does seem a little bit sluggish, but I might have to go back and play it on the original PlayStation just to see if there's actually a difference. As far as controller lag, I don't seem to notice any issues. The analog sticks don't seem to be working, only the directional pads. Um, the only emulator I've got the analog sticks to work in would be the Nintendo 64. Another thing I'd like to bring up about Laka is it's not a permanent install. So what I mean by that is you're going to have to go into recovery mode every time you want to use Laka. So if you want to use your Switch without any mods, all you have to do is reboot your console and it's back to normal. Now let's test out a 64 game. This is Doom 64. And I'm also very impressed with how well this emulator is working. We just need some sound. Most of the games seem to be running pretty close to full speed and there's even analog support with the Joy-Cons. So that's really nice. So like I said earlier, this is a huge jump for emulation on the Switch, and the Switch is a very capable emulating machine. 
it's going to be very comparable to what the Nvidia Shield can do with emulation, which is a lot. You can play Dreamcast games close to full speed, you can play GameCube games, you can play Wii games. So the possibilities of what emulators will work on the Nintendo Switch is huge. And on a side note, I'd like to mention that the game save states seem to be working well. I played this last night and then I'm trying again today and I was able to start right back from the same spot. So that's really cool that the save states are actually working. Okay, it's time for me to go, but I will keep you updated with this lock of progress and hopefully they can get some of these issues resolved soon. If you liked that video, please click that like button. If you want to hear more from me, please subscribe. And if you want to help support the channel, you can now find me on Facebook and Patreon. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.